return along with Mahapurna. One day, while fetching water for their daily preparations, the pitcher in which Mahapurna's wife was drawing up the water accidentally spilled water into the pitcher Tanjambal was using. Feeling furious at this, Tanjambal let her emotions take control of her and this resulted in hurting the feelings of Mahapurna's wife. episode, Mahapurna thought it was no longer the will of Nord Narayana that they should stay at that place and forthwith left for Sri Rangam along with his wife. When Sri Ramanuja came home, he learnt all that had happened. He recalled how on an earlier occasion, Tanjambal refused food to a person seeking alms. to the agony of Sri Ramanuja and made him hasten towards taking up sannyasa. Sri Ramanuja went to the temple of Lord Varadaraja and surrendered himself at his feet. temple. As per the command of Lord Varadaraja, Sri Ramanuja was inducted into sannyasa and given the name Yati Raja. Sri Ramanuja then accepted the Tridanda of the sannyasi as a symbol of the three realities of the universe and also of keeping the body, mind and speech under control. Everyone was surprised to hear of his sannyasa people started pouring in to see him. Since his personal endowments and erudition were well known, by ones and twos, disciples began to gather around him. Dasarathi, who was well versed in Vedas and the Vedanta, was his first disciple. Kuresa, a large hearted young man with an incomparable and extraordinary power of memory, was his second disciple. As days passed, Yadava Prakasha, the one time guru of Sri Ramanuja, was experiencing lack of mental peace. Upon advice of his mother and Kanchi Purna, Yadava visited Sri Ramanuja. Sri Ramanuja received Yadava Prakasha with due respect. Charmed to see the transcendental effulgence and also drawn by the modesty and grace of Sri Ramanuja, Yadava fell at his feet. Sri Ramanuja could not, however, bear this sight. Yadava Prakasha took sannyasa from Sri Ramanuja and considered himself blessed. Yadava was given the name Govinda Jhir. He was also given the title Arulalat Perumal Yimbarumanar. 
as per the command of Lord Anganatha, Tiruvaranga Perumal Arayar, also known as Vararanga, came to Kanjipuram to take Sri Ramanuja to Sri Rangam. He sang various devotional songs in front of Lord Varadaraja. As the Lord was pleased with the divine songs, Vararanga begged for Sri Ramanuja and the Lord granted his prayers. Thus, even the service to God by their devotees was decided by the Lord himself. Having accomplished his special mission, Vararanga brought Sri Ramanuja to the feet of Sri Ranganatha. Lord Ranganatha bestowed on Sri Ramanuja two mystic powers. The power to assuage maladies of the sufferers and to protect the devotees of God. Endowed with these powers, Sri Ramanuja began to shine with celestial beauty. At Sri Rangam, Sri Ramanuja studied various scriptures under Mahapurna and studied the depths of Prabandhams. Mahapurna advised Sri Ramanuja that in order to learn the real meaning of Charama Shloka, he can approach the great pious scholar Tirukotyur Nambi, also called as Goshti Purna, living in a nearby village called Tirukotyur. This is the village of Tirukotyur as it exists today, where the houses with their idols of Goshti Purna and Sri Ramanuja facing each other in the presence of Lord Narasimhamurti and the nearby temple reminds everyone passing that way of the interesting episode that happened about a thousand years ago. As per the wishes of Mahapurna, Sri Ramanuja left for Tirukotyur and met Goshti Purna. After worshipping his feet, he submitted his request regarding learning of the real meaning of Charama Shloka. Goshti Purna turned down his request and asked him to come some other day. In this way, he was refused 17 times. The people of the village were moved by the devotion of Sri Ramanuja, who had been earnest in his quest for learning. At the 18th time, Goshti Purna, pleased with the yearning of Sri Ramanuja for the real knowledge, revealed to him the meaning of the Charama Shloka. Later, on seeing that Sri Ramanuja's thirst for real knowledge had not been quenched, Goshti Purna, after taking several oaths from Sri Ramanuja, explained to him the sacred Ashtakshari Mantra. To all this, the Lord Narasimhamurti was the witness. Goshti Purna cautioned Sri Ramanuja that he should not reveal the mantra to anyone, as whoever hears this will be blessed and benefited in this world as well as the eternal world and attain divine bliss. No sooner he learnt the sacred mantra, he came out of the house and climbed the top of the temple tower and in a mighty voice called for the people as he addressed the gathering already waiting for him. Sri Ramanuja, the incarnation of Lakshmana, the only knower of the innermost feelings of the heart of Yamuna Muni, the master of both the superhuman powers, the dispeller of afflictions, the beloved of all people, the ocean of the cream of kindness, the sun that destroys darkness of despair. Pronounced in a stentorian voice from the depths of his joyful heart, the great mantra, Om Namo Narayanaya. Om Namo Narayanaya. The whole earth appeared sacred as the large gathering of people joined Sri Ramanuja in repeating the mantra. Ghost 
Kunti Purna came to know of whatever had happened and grew extremely angry. On seeing Sri Ramanuja, Gushti Purna poured his heart out. In all humility, Sri Ramanuja replied, Revered sir, according to your words, whoever might hear the said mantra is sure to attain the highest end of life. If an insignificant creature like me goes to hell and thousands of men and women are thereby enabled to go to Vaikuntha, that is exactly what I pray for. Such was the greatness of the large-hearted Sri Ramanuja, who cared more for the sufferings of the people than of his own. The reasoned and sweet words of Sri Ramanuja rendered the countenance of his Guru free from the slightest trace of anger. On realizing his own narrowness and the supreme magnanimity of Sri Ramanuja, Goshtipurna embraced him in deep devotion and named him Imbirumanar. Sri Ramanuja, being a personification of modesty, exclaimed to his Guru that the mantra had attained such great power only because it emanated from the mouth of such a blessed person as Goshtipurna himself, and that Sri Ramanuja, despite having transgressed the behest of the Guru, had become eternally blessed by receiving Goshti Purna's embrace, which even gods might envy. Sri Ramanuja continued his pursuit towards obtaining proficiency from various scriptures. He also obtained perfection of knowledge by studying under Sri Bharananga and Tirumale Andan. Trained by each and all of the great five, namely Kanchi Purna, Mahapurna, Goshti Purna, Vararanga and Tirumale Andan, Sri Ramanuja became as it were the second manifestation of Sri Yamunacharya, for the great sage was present in five parts in these five great souls. Now these five parts were made to one in the frame of Sri Ramanuja. Sri Ramanuja, by his actions, showed to the world how he had reverence for his gurus and how much he valued the teachings that emanated from the mouth of his gurus. On the other hand, he took all efforts in grooming his disciples taking the right path of devotion, obedience, and service to God. He could draw afflicted souls, souls burnt in flames of worldly miseries to the feet of God and remove all their miseries. That is why he was called Ubhaya Vibhutipati. By now, the devotion and patronage of all people in Sri Rangam, high and low, started going towards Sri Ramanuja, and the people started looking upon him with great reverence. Sri Ramanuja took into his possession the keys of the temple of Sri Ranganatha. He made a lot of reforms in the functioning and administration of Sri Rangam temple. He brought forth refinement in the puja procedures that was being followed. In order to ensure that each individual did his job without any lapse on his part, he introduced many regulatory measures without dislocating the priests and the staff. The high priest of the Sri Rangam temple grew jealous over this and by hook or crook decided to get rid of Sri Ramanuja. 
Sri Ramanuja used to take alms from seven houses in a day and live by eating such food thus collected. Hence, the high priest one day hatched a plan to kill him by offering poisoned food to him through one of the houses where he would seek alms. Even though the plan was executed with fine precision, the heart of the wife of the head priest who offered the alms was moved with pity at the sight of the guileless face and transcendental beauty of Sri Ramanuja. She broke forth into tears and touched his feet. At this, Sri Ramanuja grew suspicious and threw far the alms collected, as saints are forbidden from taking alms given with tears. plot having failed, the head priest hatched up yet another plan. Sri Ramanuja was in the habit of going to the temple every day. On one such occasion, the head priest gave him the water that was used for the ablution of the deity after mixing poison. day when the head priest saw him in his routines with his usual celestial beauty and superhuman luster, the head priest felt guilty for his evil thoughts and deeds. He fell at the feet of Sri Ramanuja and sought his pardon. The great-hearted Sri Ramanuja embraced the head priest and prayed to Lord Ranganatha to pardon the head priest for his misdeeds. Sri Ramanuja started out of Sri Rangam on pilgrimage and en route Kanchipuram reached Tirumalai. Sri Ramanuja decided not to climb the hill with his foot and defile it as the whole hill was considered the incarnation of Adi Sesha. The sadhus and ascetics heard of Sri Ramanuja's resolve not to climb the hill out of the respect he had for it. They implored him to change his resolve as this might prompt the common man also to behave in such a way, thereby depriving the Lord from the visit of devotees. Accepting the entreaties of high souls as a command, fixing his mind at the Lord's lotus feet, Sri Ramanuja decided to climb the hill with his hands and crawled till the top of the first hill. Sri Ramanuja, in order to fulfill his promise made to Yamunamuni on writing commentary on Brahma Sutra, was preparing himself for the task. While doing so, Sri Ramanuja wanted to have the help of Bodhaya Navritti, which was being preserved with great care at Sharada Peetham in Kashmir. Bodhayana was the great disciple of the sage Vyasa. He had an in-depth understanding of the inner meanings of Brahma Sutra. Hence, the need of Bodhaya Navritti as a reference material for writing the commentary was immense. Sri Ramanuja started studying the Vritti day and night along with his disciple Kuresa. Sri Ramanuja, with the help of Kuresa, completed writing the commentary which was named Sri Bhashya. Tradition says that while Sri Ramanuja was in Kashmir, Goddess Sharada Devi appeared before him and asked him to explain his exposition of the mantra Kapya Sampundari Kaksham. The goddess, overwhelmed with the lucidity and clarity of the exposition, gave Sri Ramanuja the title Bhashyakara. Sri Ramanuja also wrote certain invaluable books like Vedanta Deepam, Vedanta Sara, Vedanta Sangraha and Gita Bhashya. After he finished writing Sri Bhashya and other works, Sri Ramanuja, along with numerous disciples and followers, set out on spiritual campaign of conquest. Entering the kingdom of the Cholas, he travelled to the Pandya kingdom, Kerala, and moving northwards, passed through Dwaraka, Mathura, Brindavan, and other places, including Badrinath and Muktinath, and reached Kashmir. On his way back, he reached Tirupati. There, he found there was a certain amount of uncertainty over the nature of the presiding deity there. Thereupon, he convinced the people 
that the Lord present there was none other than Lord Lakshmi Narayana. He quoted evidence from Puranas and Prabandhas to establish the fact. Further, he gave discourse at Tirupati on the Upanishads. These discourses later came to be known as Vedanta Sangraha. Tradition has it that Kuresa's wife, as a result of partaking the consecrated food of Lord Ranganatha, which was sent to them by the command of the Lord himself, gave birth to twin sons. Sri Ramanuja, the knower of the past, present and the future, named them Parasara Bhattar and Vyasa Bhattar. Through his supreme powers, Sri Ramanuja could see that the sons of Kuresa were the children best suited to be named after the great sages Parasara and Vyasa. At a later date, after Sri Ramanuja left his body, Parasara became the successor of Sri Ramanuja in carrying out his mission.